Hey there, my name is Prakash and I'm the head of product of Xano. Um, we're doing a three-part series on how you bring that idea that's swimming around in your mind to an actual application. And Xano, as you know, is focused on the back end. So we're going to be looking at it through that lens and really going over database and API basics. So this is one of a three-part video that first and foremost will cover your database setup, how you take that idea and morph it into like a data schema. The second is transferring data to and from your database to your front end. And then finally, how do you interact with data from a third party service and uh, bring it into your environment or your, uh, your database? So this one will just be covering the database. And just to, to get started and starting very simply, just talking about how software or applications are built today. Again, there's the front end and the back end. And the front end is really what your user interacts with and sees. And the back end is all of the business logic that makes your application work. And so when we think about the back end, there's actually a couple components. There is the server that your back end is hosted on. There is the database that stores all of your information. There's the API, which takes data uh, and passes it to and from uh, your front end. And then finally, there is uh, the overall uh, business logic layer, which defines out how information gets processed and sent to your front end. So today we're going to be talking about the database, but in subsequent videos, we'll talk about the API and, and business logic. So uh, in getting started, uh, I like to always brainstorm first on a piece of paper or using uh, a piece of software. This one is called Miro. It's like a canvas software where you can just kind of freeform uh, kind of create whatever you want. And for this example, and our canonical example is always the loyalty card application. So the loyalty card application, imagine going to your favorite store and presenting them with a deal like 50% off, and then they can register that you've used that deal. So the little tagline here is browse and use deals from your favorite merchants. So the first thing that we want to do is start thinking about um, how this is set up from an entity uh, standpoint. So when we get started, there's three things to think about from, an, from a database setup standpoint. The first is what are the entities? So we'll map that out in a second. The second is what are the fields associated with those entities? And the third is what are the relationships that connect all of those entities together? So let's start with the first one which is what are the entities? So the first thing that I need in my loyalty card application are users, right? Pretty straightforward. So I'm going to draw a little box here. And again, you can sketch this out if you want on a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be in this app. Uh, I'm just gonna say users. And before I kind of uh, write out the properties uh, of the users, I'll just, I'll just do the entities first. So I have users, what else am I gonna need? I'm also going to need uh, merchants, right? And merchants, uh, notice how I didn't say restaurants, because this is one of the things that you have to think about. Uh, when you create a database table, it's going to store all of the objects kind of for all time. Now you can always, uh, obviously always modify and edit it, but I don't wanna just cubby myself into restaurants. I want it to be all types of uh, stores. And so that's why I decided to call it merchants. Just something, something to think about as you're designing your application. So I have users and I have merchants. The next thing that I want to create are deals, right? So these are the deals associated with the merchant. Um, you know, like 50% off, 10% off. Uh, this table is going to store all of those deals. And then the final thing that I'll want to store, and this is not necessarily obvious, but a ledger. Right, And the ledger keeps track of two things, who came into the store and what deal they used. So whenever you have activity or a transaction log or any sort of ledger that keeps track of things, usually you would store that in another database table. So when you think about how you store or set up the database table for your application, think about those different data types and then create different database tables for them. Okay, step one create all the entities. The second thing is think about the different properties or field types within those entities. So here uh, for users, for example, I'm going to have uh, a name. Um, I will have a, I don't need a description. What else do I have? An email address. I'm also going to have um, a password um, and maybe I'll do a location. So those are all of the different fields of the user. Now, if I go to the merchant table here, um, I'm going to keep it simple. I just want a simple name and then I also want a description. Okay, name and description of my merchants. For the deal table, uh, for right now I'm just going to do uh, an amount of the deal. I don't really want anything else. 
And for the ledger, I'm going to, uh, actually I'll come back to the ledger. So just get, just taking or zooming out, I have these different entities and I've defined these different fields. The reason I didn't put anything in ledger is that gets into our third bullet point of those relationships. So remember, we have the entities, we've defined out the properties or the field types in those entities, and now we wanna think about the relationships. How do these things relate together? So the first relationship that I have is the deal relationship. What are deals a part of? They're a part of merchants. So here, what I like to do is just, I usually, usually, usually say merchant and then R for relationship, right? Um, so I'm gonna just say that. And then here for ledger, remember that it keeps track of two things, who came in and what deal was used. So it has two relationships, who came in, so user relationship, and then what deal was used, so deal relationship. You could represent this any way that you want. I've seen people say instead of the R, uh, deal ID, meaning that it, this connects to a deal ID. But for right now in the brainstorming phase, we're just talking strictly about establishing relationships. So we've done the three, three, three things. Um, we've established the entities, we've created the properties or field types within those entities, and now we've created the relationships, right? So deals has, uh, it belongs to a merchant, and then the ledger has uh, what users came in, and then finally what deals they used, okay? So I hope that makes sense in terms of uh, when you're thinking about building your applications, what are the relationships, you know, and, and how do they map together? So again, this merchant, that, that is establishes to this merchant table, deal table over here, and then the user table over here. So this is just an exercise that I like to do to get started. Okay, now that we've done this, let's go ahead and move into Xano to do this, okay? So I'll, I will already have a Xano workspace open, so I'll start going through it right now. To get started, uh, my workspace, I'm just gonna call this the loyalty card um, application, okay? So I loyalty card application. I'm gonna start from scratch, I don't need a template here. And here are the database tables. So we've already thought through a lot of this stuff. Remember, there's users, merchants, deals, and ledger, right? So uh, here's users, and then I think there was merchants, and then there's deals, and then finally there's the ledger. So I have all of my database tables already here. I don't do the properties at this step, we can do that later, um, but, uh, but we'll come back to that. And then my API, I'm gonna leave this checked. We're gonna cover this in another video. Don't worry about it for now, just worry about your database tables. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next, and I will click finish. So I'm gonna go into my database because this is what we're covering today. These are the four entities or database tables that I have created. Um, so here within users, Xano automatically creates uh, a couple fields for the, your user table, your name, your email, and your password. Now remember, I wanted location here. So um, yeah, here I, want, I said location. So if I wanna add that, I just add that as a field type here, clicking the plus button. Um, and I'll just go ahead and make it a text field and I'll just call this location, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click save and now it's a field type. So if I wanna add my first user, I just click on that add new record. I can say Prakash, uh, pr uh, Prakash at email.com and then I can do password one, two, three and then I can do Los Angeles. Okay, great. So I have my first record in my user table. So the next thing that I wanna do is go to merchants. So in the merchant table, remember it had two fields. If I go back to Miro, I can say, I can see that I have name and description. So I'll just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna create a name and then I will create a description. Description, alrighty. So I have a name and a description there. Okay, so now I have the merchant set up. So now I go into, uh, let's go into the deals table. And uh, in the deals table, I can see that I have an amount and then a relationship with the merchant, okay? So let's create those fields. I'm gonna create a text field. Now I could have done, for example, um, the amount here, I could, I could have specified here, I want this to be text or I want this to be an integer. It kind of depends how you want to store the deal. If I, for example, wanted the amount to be hard-coded as a percentage or a number, I would do integer. But I like to have it freeform. I want it to say 50% off or I want to be have a lot of flexibility to the way I store the data. I might want to say 50% off the first Friday of the month, right? So I just I decided uh, to have that as a text field. You could specify that here if you wanted. Um, so I'm gonna go text field and I'm just gonna call this the amount, right? 
I'm gonna click save. So I have that amount. The next thing that I have, again, is that merchant relationship. The way you do relationships in Xano is you hit this plus button and you go table reference, right? And then you choose where the relationship is. In this case, it's merchants, right? So the deals belong to a merchant. So um, let me go ahead and go into the merchant table. I'll add my first merchant. Let's say Via Maestra. That's my favorite Italian restaurant, Italian. So you can see that's record one over here. So if I go to the deals table here, and if I add my first deal, I do 50% off. I wish that they offered that much. And I'll just link that to uh, merchant ID one. Now, why is this one? Well, we've only created one merchant and that's via Maestra. And remember, we made that relationship here in the merchant table, right? So I have via Maestra. So that's how that works. Okay, final thing is the ledger. That keeps track of who came in and what deal was used, right? So just double checking here. Yep, user relationship, deal relationship. Um, so I'm going to go table reference, who came in, so that maps to the user, and then finally, what deal they use, right? Another relationship to the deal table, okay? And I'm gonna say that I came in, I'm user ID one, I'm the only user in the system, and I use the 50% off deal. Remember that deal table that we filled out. So if I go back again, I came in, so there's Prakash, he's user ID one, and then I use the 50% off deal, which is deal ID one, okay? So this has been a very quick example of how you think about your application and then building the data structure around it. Remember, the first thing that we did was we started to write out what are the different entities uh, as a part of my application. Then we defined the different fields associated with those. And with the different fields, you can choose to put the field types if you want, right? If that's helpful for you. Um, because yeah, that, that maybe helps you think about how you wanna store the data over time. And then the final thing that we did was we established the relationships, those R's, right? So here, this deal is associated with a merchant and then Ledger, we had the relationship of the user and the deal, right? And so going back here in Xano, that's how everything relates together. So that covers the basics of how you bring your idea um, and set up the data structure for it. The second thing that we're gonna do or in the second video, we're gonna cover how you pull the data that we've just put in, uh, how you pull it using the API and connect it to a front end. Thank you.